Hi, it's nice to be able to play the guitar with drums in the background. It really is, uh, it adds another dimension to the music, I think. Especially if you can uh, have the Brazilian instrument, if you play Bossa Nova, you really need to be able to have uh, things like the pandero, things like the tambourine, very important uh, hand drum, things like the shakers, uh, okay. Um, it, it really adds a different dimension to the playing. Now, uh, how do I produce uh, these cool drumming sounds? As much as I would like to say that, you know, I know some drummers, I've got friends who play drums, etc. The truth is that I have found it extremely difficult over the years uh, to find drummers uh, and to find drummers who are interested in playing bossa nova or samba. So uh, for many years actually I have uh, used all sorts of devices and one of the things I've used in the past uh, up until maybe four or five years ago uh, is this uh, zoom box which is a, a quite an incredible uh, drum box. It's got nice lots of instruments lots of drum kits, uh, quite a few possibilities of uh, programming, etc., even if it's complicated. Uh, but these are now a little bit uh, obsolete because uh, using apps now you can program things uh, a lot easier. Okay, so th th I have actually retired this um, a few years ago, but uh, I I'm very grateful because for many years I used this uh, box and in fact, I built some contraptions to be able to use my foot to change rhythms uh, by pushing on these pads with my foot. But obviously not directly. I've had to build some, some interesting pedals. I think there's a video out there on my channel that demonstrates one of the contraptions that I built to, to be able to do that in life, huh? to be able to change the rhythms. Huh? So I've retired this since. And the reality is that I discovered uh, quite an amazing app uh, a few years ago. And that app has all the Brazilian rhythms that I need. It has all the Brazilian instruments as well as standard drum kits. And so okay, I am fortunate to have uh, discovered that uh, iPad app that I use for, for drumming. Uh, and I will present it in this video. You just have to be a little bit patient because I've got about a 10 minute presentation uh, where I describe a standard uh, app, a standard drumming app, and how a standard drumming app can evolve to become an advanced uh, drumming app. So I would like you to be a little bit patient uh, at the beginning, and then I'm going to uh, tell you what the product is, what the, the app is, and I'm going to do a more detailed demo of the uh, app. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you find it uh, instructive. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you are not already subscribed. Okay, to do my demonstration, I'm using a very simple drumming app called DM1 on which I've already programmed and it's very easy actually. Look, I'm going to remove all the hi-hat uh, beats and then I'm going to put them back on so that you can see how easy it is actually to program a pattern. Now, this is a drumming pattern. It happens to be a bossa nova type pattern, so I'll play it. This is not bad actually. You can already use a pattern like this and play your guitar or play any instrument you want with this pattern. Huh? It's much better than a metronome. And uh, I think it's good practice actually to be playing with even electronic drums like this. Now, the nice thing is you can change the tempo, of course.
What the other thing I can do is I can change the instrument as well. Okay, so I'm going to call that the kit. Okay, for, it'll help uh, for later. The drum kit, so I can have a, like a classic drum kit. As you can see, you can choose different types of drums, acoustic drums, uh, Ludwig drums, uh, studio drums, etc. So you can see that you can do quite a lot. And if this beat gets boring, you can create another pattern, and slightly different perhaps, and then you can string those patterns together into what most apps call a song. So, okay, you, you put them uh, uh, side by side and then you play them together and then you can have some variations because otherwise, if you just play, it gets pretty boring after a while. I'm going to move to another uh, app in order to continue my demonstration. Huh? But I'm going to use this uh, pattern, basically, uh, and this idea of the grid. See that on the left, uh, I've got the kick, the snare, the hi-hat closed. These are the instruments in the kit, okay? The different parts of the drum. Uh, and going left to right, you can see the timeline. Okay, I've uh, drawn a picture here, which is a simplified grid. And the simple drumming app will give you these possibilities of creating uh, a pattern. But wouldn't it be nice if we could set the loudness of each beat to be different? Okay, as you can see here, I have set uh, in a hypothetical app, I've set what some people call the velocity or the loudness of the, each beat, changing the beat loudness on each individual beat. It does improve actually the, the human feel huh, of, of your uh, uh, drum beats. What if we took some of the beats and you can see that I've got some of the beats in a different color and I'm going to put a probability on these beats. I'm going to say that these beats don't play every time we cycle through this pattern. Uh, this beat here will play 80% of the time, but this one will play 50% of the time and this one will play 50% of the time too. Now remember the height of this bar is the loudness, huh? okay? It's still the loudness. So these uh, beats will not always play, but when they play, you see what loudness they are going to use, huh? okay? So when you play this pattern now, with these probabilities that have been introduced, you're going to have some variation. So the pattern is not going to be identical every time that uh, you hear the pattern. Huh? It's going to be changing because the app is introducing uh, some probability to some of the beats as you have decided. Okay, so you're going to get a much more realistic, a much nicer sounding beat. Now that you've got two things, you've got the variable loudness and you've got the probabilities. But let's add a little bit more. So imagine that I have a button called Humanize. And when I push on this button, the app will start introducing very, very small variations in the time interval between these sub beats. Huh? Okay. But very, very small, very subtle changes in timing between these. Okay. And imagine that also, and we talk about random changes, but very small. And imagine that also at the same time, this humanized function uh, will increase and decrease the loudness very, very slightly, very, very slightly uh, on these beats that you see on this pattern. Once again, these very small changes are going to make you feel that the drumming is more human, more realistic. Okay. And remember, these changes are random. So they are changing all the time. Every time you play this pattern, these small variations are going to be different. Imagine also, I'm going to add another dimension. Imagine that every time you hit a beat like this here or this or this or this, imagine that the app 
will go and choose from, I'm going to give just an example, from 16. I've got 16 different sounds for my kick drum. Okay? And this can be, for example, the, the position where you hit a drum. And as you know, when you hit a drum, uh, depending on if you hit it in the middle or if you hit it on the side or anywhere in between, you're going to have variations, sometimes quite significant variations in the sound. Uh, so just imagine that every time the app wants to produce a sound, a beat, on any instrument here, it's going to go and choose, very quickly of course, it's going to choose from a number of samples uh, and it's going to choose those variations randomly. So that actually means that every time uh, a beat is played, it's going to sound different. So we've introduced actually quite a lot of things that are making now your pattern. And remember, we are only playing one pattern so far. And yet this pattern is beginning to sound actually much more like a human drummer is playing it because of these variations that we've introduced. Imagine also that I can choose if I wanted to some of these beats I can choose to move them in time. Huh? Okay, usually, you know, quite small changes. But if I move this, if I shift this beat, it will always play uh, a little bit early. And I'm showing you here two beats that I have shifted. Actually, there are three beats here that I have shifted so that they play a little bit early. And once again, you see, that's going to add more realism to the drumming. I, by the way, I rarely use uh, this uh, time shift. But once again, I'm just show, trying to show you the different features that one could imagine in a sophisticated, in an advanced app. Okay. Now, I'm going to introduce something which I could have introduced a little bit earlier. But imagine that you can also... Uh, introduce um, let me show you this part of the screen okay you can see that here we have some beats that don't play all the time okay you can see them in the light green color now imagine that I can link those beats okay imagine that this is uh, these two beats are linked to this one which means what I'm saying is that when this beat comes on maybe it's a 60 percent so as soon as this beat appears, or when it appears, I want, it, I want these two beats to play as well. So all of a sudden, uh, this uh, will override the probabilities. And whenever this beat appears, it's going to drive these two beats to appear as well. I've got another type of link as well here. I've got these two beats are linked together and there's a number eight here. So this is saying that uh, every eight cycles of this pattern. So when this pattern plays seven times, the eighth time I want to hear these two beats appear and they will not appear the rest of the time. So they only appear every eight every eight patterns okay not every eight beats every eight uh, cycles of the pattern so you see I've I've introduced another dimension uh, which will make the drum sound much more real I show you also imagine uh, doing uh, in order to have full control of, of uh, your drum pattern and your drums uh, imagine that you have a volume control on each one of the instruments okay so if you feel that for example your uh, kick drum is too loud on a particular pattern you can actually reduce the loudness of the whole kick drum okay because you don't want it to be too um, uh, dominant for example huh? i often use this on uh, cymbals huh? cymbals i find sometimes can be a little bit loud for my taste uh, so I tend to, I can use these volume controls. 
so it's a bit like using a mixing desk if you want but you can apply this to each instrument um, as you are playing that um, that pattern okay uh, one last point actually imagine also uh, an app that would allow you to instead of having four subdivisions here for each beat huh? have you noticed we've been working so far with four beats with four subdivisions uh, imagine that there is one beat here where I want more subdivisions I want eight subdivisions or I want 16 subdivisions etc so imagine an app that would allow you to do that so that you can have really control of if you want to create rolls you know so very fast uh, drum rolls uh, and then that would be possible and of course if the app has the functionality of probability you know setting probability setting the loudness etc that is maintained even when you subdivide uh, one or more of your beats okay so i ask you to imagine all these things that i've just described but in fact you don't really have to imagine them because they do exist and they exist in an amazing app uh, um, drum perfect pro which i think is an absolutely amazing tool so it's extremely sophisticated i've only described some of the features that you find in, in Drum Perfect Pro because I didn't want this to become a very technical uh, video. But the most important is that in spite of uh, all that sophistication, you have a, a very simple application to use and you can use it straight out of the box as I do in most of my videos actually. I use the standard packs, the standard patterns and I put my iPad on a speaker and uh, off I go. Uh, Drum Perfect Pro is the result of an amazing collaboration between two amazing guys, Marinus van de Mollengraft and Gilbert uh, Bedam. Marinus created this app to start with, so the application is the brainchild of uh, Marinus, but since 2014, uh, Marinus and Gilbert have been collaborating to improve this app, which has become something quite exceptional. Huh? So Marinus tends to work more on the engine, the drumming engine and all the, the heart of the app and all the features uh, that I explained and many more features that I have not uh, explained and we, which we might see uh, we, we might catch a glimpse in the next part. And Gilbert has been working on all the packs that this application uh, provides as options. I think the general MIDI pack is free and you can buy any of these uh, or all of these. Actually, I have most of these. Uh, I, I, they are so good and I don't think they are expensive. Uh, so I've actually I started buying uh, the Brazilian rhythms one and two and the batucada and I've actually bought uh, Latin percussions and uh, funky backbeats I think I've got one of these two or both and I've got the jazz sessions etc because I think they are so absolutely amazing and of course uh, many of the patterns that you find in those style packs use the features of the product the main features of the product which I have explained to you. Let me go through the more detailed functionality, show you the screens on the Drum Perfect Pro so that you see the app and get an idea of the possibilities that are available, even if you don't use them actually, even if you just use the, the out of the box patterns and the simple functionality, at least you know what you can hope to do in the future if you want to develop the drum part of your music. Okay, I'm going to start from the beginning. Uh, I'm going to run Drum Perfect Pro on my iPad. And the first screen that appears is the Patterns screen. Uh, this is an important screen which shows you, if you look, I'm going to use this pointer here, if you look at the top, you can see what kits I have loaded, what kits I'm using, and I've got quite a few here. 
Uh, if you go down here, you can see the tempo of the pattern that uh, I'm using. Let me see, actually, I'll play it. Okay, so you can see this pattern and actually you can see the instrument that you can see the, the, in green here is the kick drum. So you can see one instrument at a time here and you can see the different uh, values with the different velocities of loudnesses. Uh, you can see the subdivisions as well. This is quite useful. You can see that we've got four beats with four subdivisions. As, and this is where you change the time signature subdivision. Uh, forget this for a minute, actually. This, this is not uh, so important for now. But what is important is this is where you load the patterns. So if you buy the packages, as, as we said, the style, the different uh, Brazilian or funky or whatever packages you have, uh, you've, you've got a whole set of patterns uh, available and this is where you load them onto your active area and this is the active area for the patterns here at the moment I've got uh, a few patterns already loaded because I've been playing around uh, for, for this demo and uh, I can select on this screen I can also select uh, the different patterns that I have loaded okay it's not the only place where I can do that, but so m basically, just to recap, uh, this you, you can you have a number of screens here, and you select them using or this menu up here. Um, <clears throat> the patterns screen that we're looking at allows you to look at what kits you have. Uh, it allows you to set the tempo, as I said here. It allows you to load the uh, patterns. Okay. Uh, and save them as well if you create new patterns etc you save them here and you can see you've got an active area here where you can see all the different patterns that you have and you can select those patterns here the last this is a pattern I was using it's a standard pattern I was using however this pattern works with uh, a batucada kit so otherwise it doesn't sound good so I've just selected the batucada kit and this is uh, influenza du jazz which I recorded a, a couple of days ago, actually. And this is the standard pattern that I use throughout the song. Okay, so this is the pattern screen. I'll stop this. The next screen I want to show you, and this is really one of the most important, is the, the grid. And you are already used to this, so I'm not going to go into much detail. Uh, here you can see the batucada, interestingly enough. So this is not a standard uh, drum kit, like an acoustic drum or a studio drum. This is definitely the samba. You can see uh, this is the BA1 samba uh, kit, which has all the instruments that you can see here, uh, the shakers and the panderos and the tambourine, etc., which I think is absolutely amazing. Uh, so this is where you see the grid and there's a number of things that you can do actually on this uh, grid. Uh, one of them is, uh, so you can mute actually any instrument here when you are playing the, the pattern. Uh, you can mute the instrument, you can solo the instrument so it only plays by itself and you can really listen to it. You can also design, I mean if I touch, I'm going to touch the screen, you can see that I'm... I'm activating some beats huh? so you can design and this is not a bad place to design patterns if you if you do want to design patterns this is not a, a bad starting place because it gives you the big picture uh, for your pattern with all the instruments okay so you can do quite a lot here this uh, screen actually also if there's a little button here which I'm going to to show you here uh, pattern uh, kit you know, it opens another screen which gives you a view of all, once again, it gives you a view of all the kits that you've loaded already. And uh, th these are the kits I have loaded. I have by no means filled all my space. I can load up to 16 kits at any one time. And I can load up to 64 patterns at any one time. And I've only loaded uh, eight patterns at the moment. Okay, so you can move from this view and so I can select actually the different uh, patterns here and they appear on, on my grid and then I can make this disappear. Okay, so this is quite a handy uh, function uh, that you can access from, from the grid uh, function. You can, as I said, you can, I'll make this disappear. You can actually create 
uh, new patents using, uh, I mean, I can show you actually how easy this is. I'll take an empty slot, uh, slot number 10. I'll go to the kit, to the grid uh, screen. Uh, it looks like I've been playing around with this already. So I'll make, uh, let me clear uh, this. I can erase this. Okay, so I've start, I'm starting uh, from scratch. Uh, I'm, this is giving me the uh, the Batucada uh, kit. I'm going to go back to, say, a light kit or garage kit. Uh, and I can start, actually, okay, I can start designing uh, the kick drum, for example. This is just a uh, quick example. I'm showing you how quickly it is. Okay, I've got the drum going and then I can add uh, the rim shot if I wanted to. Okay, I'm just messing around. Okay? So you can see how easy it is to um, create a pattern and then I can save that pattern and give it a, a name. Or if I want to save as a, with, a, with a name, I can go back to patterns here and um, I'm in 10, save as. And I can give it a name, okay? And you, I can even create categories of patterns, etc. So this is a quick demo, so I'm not going to go into it to detail. Huh? So we've seen the patterns uh, screen, we've seen the grid screen. Uh, if you want to load kits, this is normally where you would... Uh, actually, let me stop this. So I'll go back to kits. This is normally where you would load... Uh, a new kit and I'll give you a demonstration actually I don't use uh, for example I don't use crunchy kits so uh, I'm going to load another kit in its place so I'll go to the load button here okay and I'll take uh, BR1 actually I use this a lot uh, B, this is the Brazilian number one that comes with the first Brazilian pack that I mentioned uh, previously. So the, here we are, this is the, the Brazilian kit and I can uh, then play the, the pattern uh, that is uh, selected at the moment, which is pattern number 10. I should have given it a name actually, let me call it uh, demo, demo one. Okay. Okay, so I've got demo one and I can play it as a rubbish pattern. But okay, you've got an idea, you've got the idea. So, uh, otherwise, I don't want to overcomplicate things actually. There's uh, what you really need in the kits um, screen is the loading the kits mainly. Yeah? Uh, you can. This gives you a view also of the samples that are being selected as you are playing uh, your pattern. Uh, samples for this uh, this particular instrument. You can see rim shot here is selected. So let's move to the next uh, screen, which is actually quite important, because at the moment so far I have only shown you uh, the use of patterns of individual patterns. But I mentioned the fact that you can string together a number of patterns. Uh, and create a song and you don't have to create full songs actually you can uh, create a, just string together a number of patterns and loop them for example you can do that you don't have to create a, a full song because it can be quite long actually if you really want to create a song from from uh, beginning to end I'll just give you a little demo so I'm going to clear this song. This song is called DPP Pat Bank 64. So I, I don't want to use this. I will, I'll clear the song. Huh? Okay, so I've got a uh, space here uh, which allows me now to start uh, putting together any of the patterns that I've got on my pattern space down here. Okay, you can see that I've got eight patterns, nine with the demo pattern that I created earlier. Uh, so if I want to create a song, it is extremely easy. So I select the pattern and I insert it. Okay, in, in this sort of timeline, if you want. 
And let me say that this song is going to start with this pattern uh, that's played four times. Okay? And then I'm going to move to, uh, say, pat the pattern that is in slot number three. I'm going to uh, run it for a couple of times. Okay? And then I'm going to go back to the previous pattern. So I select the previous pattern and I insert, say, four times the previous pattern. Okay? So now I've got, you could call this a very short sequence of patterns, okay, that I've arranged. Now you can see that it's, it's going to get very confusing very quickly. So what you can do is, is uh, I can select one, two, three, four, and I can give them a color. And I can then deselect, and then I can select these two and give them a different color. And then back to select one, two, three, four, and I can give them the previous sort of orange color. And this makes life a lot easier for me because I know that I've got different patterns uh, as part of this song or part of the sequence. And let me play it already. You can already play that. And you can see this is changing and moving through the different patterns. Huh? Some patterns are longer than others, so you have to be a little bit careful with how many bars uh, each pattern occupies huh? in, in the time space. Huh? Okay, so I think they have demonstrated how you can do this. Now, if you have a long song, it gets quite complicated, actually. And uh, yes, I forgot to say that if you push on loop, this is going to be playing forever, okay? It'll loop through this whole uh, sequence that I've just created. That so I'll remove the loop for now. There is a very, f very powerful functionality uh, in here is that you can actually create groups of patterns. Let me just demonstrate. So I'm going to take seventy bossa zero two, uh, and I'm going to insert it. Sorry, I'm going to to come here. 70 bossa 0 2 I've just selected and I'm going to insert it one two so twice and then I'm going to take uh, the first bossa pattern I'm going to insert it twice okay so these four patterns I'm not going to change the color for now but uh, these four patterns I'm going to sh select them and I don't want to see them as four separate patterns. This is a group that's going to come back over and over in this song, for example. So what I can do is I can click, I can call this a part. This is, this is like a group or a part, and I can call it, actually, this is a group of patterns. I'm going to call it group A, okay? So this has become group A, and have you seen, it's hidden now. I don't see the different, uh, the, the individual parts of the group. I can see them if I want to, uh, but they, they are now uh, collapsed into one box, okay? But they are still here, actually. When we come to play these, uh, the, the app is going to play the four patterns that I have within that group. Okay, so this is really powerful and it makes for very... Because in, in general, in songs, you have things that repeat. So you don't want... Uh, you can group them all together. You can group a whole verse together and put the, put it in, all in one box uh, and call it... Uh, so that would be a part and call it, you know, part uh, one or, or verse one or whatever you want to call it. Huh? So that's really extremely useful and powerful functionality. There's an even uh, more interesting functionality as well linked to these parts. 
And let me demonstrate. So I'm going to do something similar to what I did earlier. Uh, I'm going to select pattern number one here, okay, in, in slot number one. I'm going to insert it. And I'm going to then take pattern, this pattern that is in slot three. I'm going to insert that. And then I'm going to insert the 70 bossa pattern. There you are. So I've got three patterns here. Uh, I, once again, I'm not going to change the color because uh, I want this to be a reasonably quick demo. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to select these three patterns that I've just put into the, the timeline, my song timeline. And this time, instead of just hitting part, instead of uh, touching the, this button, okay, pressing on this button uh, quickly, I'm going to do a long press. And if, when I do a long press, it's going to allow me to create a new part. I'll call it Group B. Okay. And because I did a long press this time, Group B is different from Group A. Remember, Group A, uh, when we came to it, when the app came to it, it played the four patterns that there were in that group. In this case, only one of the patterns is going to play and the app is going to select one of the three patterns I put in that group randomly. Now, this is extremely powerful because it means that you can use this group B. By the way, any group can be copied and pasted anywhere in the song, uh, which means in, if you use one of these random uh, selection groups or parts, it means that the app will select a different pattern every time it comes to that group, which I think is another way of randomizing, ma making things uh, sound interesting. I tend to use patterns, simple patterns, uh, in most of the, the music and the videos that I do, even in live sometimes, you, because the patterns are changing all the time, you know, they are... Uh, I explained uh, earlier at length uh, how one pattern can change uh, as it cycles through, uh, then I don't really need to create songs. I have had to create, I did create actually one song uh, called Coisas Distantis, which is one of my favorite songs. And I did take the trouble. I, I think I may have spent two hours um, to create even uh, some patterns. I needed just bits of fills and, uh, and patterns. So I, I probably created, uh, let me see, if I load that song, if I can find it, Coisas Distantis, actually, there you are. So I'm loading this. And there you are, this is... The patterns that you can see on the second line here are the ones that I created for this song. Okay, so you can see I created one, two, three, four, five, six, seven patterns. Uh, a lot of these patterns are standard. You can see that I've used uh, standard patterns as well, and some of them I just cut uh, to shorten them. Okay, so I haven't actually created many new patterns. They're all copies uh, of existing patterns, which I have actually simplified or chopped in terms of uh, timing. Uh, I, I just needed half a bar or something like that. And I've put them together in the song, which you can see here. I'll show you the timeline. Uh, at the time, I didn't uh, use the groups. I should have done, if I had used the groups, uh, this would have looked a lot shorter and a lot easier. I would have made my life a lot easier. I, I did use the color, however. Uh, so this is Coisas uh, Distantis. And somebody I respect a lot, Christophe Rousseau, you know, one of the greatest uh, Bossa Nova guitar players uh, on YouTube, uh, listened to the song Coisas Distantis, my version. He liked it a lot. And he congratulated me for using a real drummer which uh, is interesting. So uh, Christophe Rousseau was fooled into believing that this 
this was a real human drummer playing uh, in the song. He did spot that the flute wasn't real uh, and said, you know, William, it would be nice if you put a, a proper flute on, on your song uh, for the flute solo. Uh, but he actually thought that I used a, a real drummer. I never went back to him to tell him that uh, it's not a real drummer. I may have to do that uh, sometime, huh? at some point in time. Uh, but the part, uh, of course, when you create a full part like this, it will sound realistic because you've got the, the fills and uh, stops and things like that, which, which I worked on to make it realistic. But this, the drum sounds uh, are exceptionally realistic as well. No? So this is the song functionality, which I think is very important. Uh, although uh, I, I don't really use it very often, I use the standard patterns out of the box. If you do decide, if you want to create patterns, I showed you earlier that you can go on the grid screen. Okay, I've got a blank grid at the moment and I'm going to just put a few beats for the kick drum and I'm going to just put a few beats for the rim shot huh? just just messing around now this is no real no real pattern actually okay just, just kick drum and what can we put actually maybe hi-hat actually let me see hi-hat closed okay i've just put a hi-hat closed and you can see here that i at the moment, all of these beats seem to have uh, the same value, okay? In terms of loudness, I can't tell what the loudness is. Uh, I could potentially uh, start, because I've got the possibility, I could select, let me show you, I could select a few beats. For example, I'll take some of these beats here, I'm selecting them, and I could go to... Uh, down to the bottom here, you can see there's a little button called Velocity A. And this gives me the value of the, the loudness of that beat. Okay, so I can decide what, the, what Velocity A is going to be. So I can increase uh, or decrease the loudness of these beats that I've selected. So I've just decreased uh, the loudness of those. Uh, and but you can't see that I have decreased them really, yeah. And this is so you can start working on the pattern here, but this is not going to be sufficient if you start working on different velocities, or if you want to change probabilities. I'm going to unselect, deselect, and then I'm going to say in terms of probability, I want uh, this. Oops, I'm going to select this beat. Uh, and this beat, actually, I want to give them a lower probability. Okay, I don't want them to play every time. So I go and I select down the bottom, uh, the, the button here at the bottom left hand corner. And I'm going to put a probability of roughly 50%. I can't tell, but uh, I think it's telling me this is 50%. So you can see that I've actually, on the, on the grid screen, I've managed to change velocities and probabilities. But this is not very satisfactory because I can't actually see the exact values. And this is where you need to go back to your patterns uh, screen uh, to look more closely at the different instruments. So I am on the rim shot because that's what I did last. That's what happens actually if you are on the grid and you have selected rim shot. As you can see here, I've been working. This is the, the instrument I've been working on. Uh, when I go to patterns, this is going, what's going to show on the main screen here in the middle. Okay, this is my rim shot. Just ignore all the, the beats in uh, the, the sort of violet uh, or purple color. But you can see what I've done in terms of uh, probability. Uh, th there are two... Uh, beats here which I have now subjected to subject to probability I changed the I didn't change any uh, velocities or loudnesses here I did on the kick drum so if I go to the, my kick drum 
uh, you will see, ah, that's interesting. I thought I had changed the velocities on uh, some kick drum beats. Huh? Let me try again. I'll go back to grid. And, uh, ah, no, so, sorry, it wasn't on the kick drum. I do apologize. It was uh, on the hi-hat that I changed velocity. And you can see, actually, the velocities that I have changed. Huh? Can you see? I selected these beats and I turned them down. Now... If you want more precise control, this is where this part of the screen comes in, okay? And you can do, you can select, uh, for example, just let me show you. I'll, I'll select the beats that I changed earlier on. I'm going to select them again, and I'm going to give them a slightly either lower or higher velocity. So if you can see, I, I can play on, on the velocity as I as I wish okay and I'll deselect and then I can select some beats here and as you can see the in the probability slider here I can reduce the probability and you can see the color is changing huh? uh, if I put 50% probability for these two beats uh, this is where you have full control really over your uh, loudnesses of each beat and the probability but you don't have to do them individually as you can see i've selected multiple i'll do it again you know i can select uh, multiple beats here and then change the velocities uh, as a group so that's quite handy really huh? uh, i can also the last slider down here we looked at velocity we looked at probability the last slider here is a time shift uh, which you need to be to use with uh, great care but you know I can move can you see uh, I'm actually moving some of these beats the ones I've selected uh, in, in time okay uh, so that's what I wanted to show you there is actually a small uh, subtlety that I, I have to uh, mention sorry let me deselect uh, I mentioned um, okay that yes I mentioned the humanize button if you remember so this is where it is the, this is where the humanize button is so there you are. I think that I've described the main functionality. Once again, this product is extremely rich. I've only covered maybe 60% of what the product is capable of doing. Uh, look at the, the link. I talked about the linked uh, sets or when you link together different beats and things like that. So you really need to, if you are interested in getting into the heart of the product and create your own beats and your own songs etc the manual is excellent so you can you can read the the manual and start playing but once again uh, sorry to repeat myself you don't need to know to have all that knowledge you can just use the standard patterns uh, the standard kits and and just play so you you really don't need to uh, to, to know all this stuff but I think it is quite fascinating and it's nice to know that you have a product uh, that uh, offers all those uh, possibilities should you want to develop uh, th this uh, part of your music uh, further. After that the, there are still other screens uh, you can ha you have live pads so you can play actually the different instruments uh, okay on your screen should should you want to and you can do that as a pattern is playing yeah? and you've got the mixer as well so you can actually play on the volume i mentioned that in my uh, the early part of uh, this video so you can change the volume of each of the instruments that you have um, uh, on your grid so to speak yeah? You can do a lot more, by the way. This is really a very quick demo. You can export any songs that you have into different files. Um, I use the settings because I sometimes, very rarely these days, 
I use a MIDI pedal, which allows me to, to control my iPad, to control Drum Perfect Pro. These are all the possibilities that you have to control this app from the outside using, for example, a MIDI pedal. Uh, what I use, for example, is a previous pattern and next pattern. So if I want to use my pedal to switch to the next pattern in a live situation, uh, I can do that and I can switch to the previous pattern. The most useful one is stop and start, the drums, but you've got other possibilities as well. Huh? which I'm not going to go into. You can change the volume of your, your kit. You can change the, the, the tempo as well using uh, pedals, etc. etc. So uh, this is really for a specialist use, uh, but it can be actually quite useful in uh, live. If you have a MIDI pedal, you can control this application from, from the outside. I'm not going to go into more detail. And very importantly, the store is where you find the different style packs, the different drum beats that you can buy, which I've mentioned already, and here they are. You can see the big discovery actually was the, these Brazilian rhythms, which not many drum apps provide. Huh? So you've got a Brazilian one. Uh, to give you an example, this Brazilian one has one kit, BR1, uh, which has 16 instruments, but you've got 118 patterns available as part of this kit. Okay, If you go to the batucada, which is the samba uh, instrument, you can see what instruments you have here, uh, um, unlike a standard sort of drum kit. Uh, but you've got, uh, this time, you've got 121. So you've got one kit called BA1, uh, and you've got 121 uh, patterns available. So I think this is uh, absolutely amazing. Huh? Uh, this, I think the brushes came, came out uh, recently and that's got 223 patterns. Huh? It's got uh, one kit with 32 instruments and uh, 223 uh, patterns. Huh? So, and I think that these are inexpensive considering what you are getting. I believe that they are very high quality the samples are extremely high quality, so the sounds of these drums are amazing. And as I said uh, before, these uh, packs use the functionality of Drum Perfect Plus. I said Marinus and Gilbert are working hand in hand, and so when Gilbert designs new drum packs, he is using all the functionality that's at the heart of the product. So there you are, you've got uh, a most amazing drumming app. Uh, enjoy it and best of luck.